Justin. Uh, obviously, on the conference call the other day, it was fun hearing you say that, you know, you invite a broken nose in this fight, you invite a wolf. But do you feel like Tony, his style, you know, offers you those openings that, that you know, you can punish him, you can hurt him in ways that maybe another guy wouldn't allow you to, to do that kind of style because he does take a lot of risks. He does take a lot of chances. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm going to get elbowed. You know, I'd be a fool to go in there and be like, I'm going to come out unscathed. That's just not, it's really not, a, you know, nine out of ten times that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, we have seen him get hit. We've never seen him be finished. Um, no one's ever put Edson to sleep like he did. It's going to be hard to uh, to find it. You know, I know how hard it's going to be to find this shot, um, but it only takes one, and I possess the skills and the power to, to land it. I will lay it. Um, and we we'll see what happens. I, you know, Tony is a very unique fighter, and it's going to take time and patience to figure out, you know, how to be successful. When we talked before this fight came together, I had you break down Habib and Tony, and, and you know, obviously you gave Tony a lot of props, but you also said you thought Habib would probably win that fight. Do you believe that Tony? I won't say easier; it's the wrong word, but. You, is is Tony or uh, Tony a, an easier fight to figure out than a Habib fight? Because I know you mentioned you probably wouldn't have taken Habib on short notice. Like, is there is there an easier puzzle to figure out with, with a Tony versus a Habib? No, I think the puzzle is going to be hard. You know, harder. Um, there's so many unknowns with Tony. You know, you know what Khabib's going to do, and that's going to be take you down. You know, try to push you to the fence, and if not, he's going to try to take shots from. Um, from space in the middle of the octagon. I believe that he can't take me down in the middle of the octagon, and I believe I could stay off the fence. So, you know, that puzzle is written. How do you beat Tony? I don't know. I'm going to find out. And last question, Justin. I know you've said, you know, life doesn't exist for you after May 9th until that fight is over, but I've got to ask the question because Tony has downplayed, you know, the, the possibility of the Habib fight, understanding he's gone through it five times, why it hasn't happened, but... Uh, you've always dreamed of that Habib fight. Now Habib's come out and said he'll be ready by July. Can I imagine that it does mean a lot to you to win this interim title and then move on to fight a guy like Habib? I know it's a guy you've kind of dreamed about fighting for a long time. That's that's all I dream about. Um, it's the opportunity to prove I'm the best. But yeah, um, you know, they got some very personal issues. I have nothing to do with that. Um and I'm excited. Again, we're fighting for the right to represent the United States of America against Russia's best. Um, I believe it's hard for uh, the United States to get behind one fighter because we're such a melting pot and we're from so many places. But I believe that I could possibly bring us together and, you know, go to war with, with, with the United States behind me. And that's huge. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Damon. Next, we have Gabriel Gonzalez from Cage Side Press. Yeah, Justin, how are you doing over there, man? I'm great. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Justin, you know, obviously, when you get the fight, your mind has to be really focused on it. But at the same time, we're in the middle of crazy times. What did you do when you weren't training? Were you a guy who was binging a lot on TV? Were you just getting out and walking the dog? What was going on with you? Nobody lives a crazier life than a man that signs up to fight Tony Ferguson. Uh, my life hasn't changed a bit. I go to work, I train for like two or three hours a day, and I go home and hang out, you know? Make sure I'm getting the proper nutrition, a lot of rest, some video games. Um, but other than that, nothing's different. What's your game to play? I've been playing Call of Duty. You're pretty good? Oh, the new Warzone. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm all right. I'm all right. Gotcha. Um, a lot of people talking on... Oh, go ahead. I said I have some good game. I've won some free-for-alls. Gotcha. A lot of people talking about embedded... I think a lot of the dog lovers out there, you know, you're now their new mascot. Is that something you do often, or is that something, you know, it was a special treat because of Embedded, carrying your dog on your back? You saw how comfortable he was. That's That doesn't happen the first time. Um, I've been holding him above my head. He's 10 years old. He'll be 10 years old in August. I've been super lucky for his health. But, you know, he trusts me, I guess, because, I, like I said, when he was a baby, I was just walking around with him above my head. 
But yeah, that doesn't have that's you know, he's not that comfortable the first time. I I've been doing it since he was a baby. Finally, Justin, um, there's a lot of talk about everything going on, going into the fight, the fact that it is Tony. You go out there, they put the belt on you on Saturday. What would you be the most proud of, of the accomplishment? Well, I would, uh, I would love, you know, I approach every fight as if they're better, stronger, faster, bigger, uh, more prepared. And I love when I can come out of there and prove myself wrong. In that in that scenario, so that would be the biggest accomplishment is just knowing that, you know, knowing that I'm here, knowing that I'm here, knowing that I proved myself to myself, and that's all. That's all I care about. Yeah.